What's up guys, back with another Twin Motion tutorial. I'm gonna show you how I accomplish this rendering in Twin Motion. Let's get right into the video. Okay, so we have our scene here and um, we're gonna do something a little different in this rendering. I want this rendering to have a little bit of a dramatic effect, play with some lighting and um, let's just see if we can create something interesting and uh, something that hopefully you can learn something from so all right right now in our scene you can see I have a bike and I have two large windows here and we have some picture frames and just kind of show you a little bit where some of these assets come from so this is a console table and I believe I got this out of the Twin Motion library. If not, it would be in Sketchfab. So a lot of things that I like to do in my rendering is, is pull from uh, Twin Motion library or Sketchfab. So Sketchfab, you can go to architecture or you can go to a lot of different examples here. You go to furniture and you can kind of just choose from the large selection that they have in their library or you can go to twin motion library and you can go to objects and home and you have different choices here so depending on the type of scene that you're working with you go to living room and you have all sorts of type of options here so if you're looking for any type of different furniture twin motion has a um, a library full that you can choose from so that's typically where I get a lot of my assets from sometimes depending on the scene itself I may uh, import my own furniture but in this case that's not what I did so just kind of giving you a little bit of an idea on where these assets come from all right so guys don't forget to smash that like button for me hit the notification bell and if you got any comments um, don't be afraid to leave a comment down below all right so the first thing that we want to do is create our image I've already created mine so I'm gonna click on mine here and as you can see I have some things already set let's let's uh, make some adjustments so right now what you're looking at is our composition overlay and I'm going to turn that off for now and the path tracer is on so all right so right now my image looks not good at all um, there's nothing really happening here so there's a lot of adjustments that we need to make so let's click on our environment tab and let's just see what we can do to enhance our scene all right so right now we have our Sun and our time of day and one of the first things I like to determine is well I go with dynamic sky like the scene based on the selected Sun sky and cloud settings or go based off HDRI so you can choose either or I guess it just depends on you know what type of scene you're trying to create here so I went with the dynamic sky and let's start changing some of these things so here for the time of day I want to change that let's do around two two o'clock okay so one of the things I also like to do is activate my path tracer at a low setting just so we can follow along and see some of the progression that we're making and see what our settings are actually doing to our rendering. So we're going to click on rendering and we'll turn on the path tracer now so we can keep it on high, which is it's uh, high default settings. So we have our samples per pixel at 256 and our max bounces at 10 and emissive materials and denoiser is checked and our fireflies by default is at 14. So let's go back to the environment tab and let's play with our north offset. Right now it's at 90. I'm gonna change that to 
45. So as you can see, we have these nice opening windows with um, natural light coming in, which is really good. So we're getting a lot of natural light coming into our scene, which is what we want. I want to turn this image into a dramatic effect or give it a dramatic effect with uh, some character. All right, so now for our intensity, we'll, we can keep that at default, which is at 100,000 lux. But since we have so much natural light coming in already, I want to um, not, I want to change our temperature from more of a warm temperature, uh, maybe to a cool at some point, but this temperature will keep 6,900. Okay, so now let's kind of look at our size of our sun that's coming in. So right now it's at five. I want to increase that. So as you can see, as I increase this, you start to see our shadows and our natural light that's coming in is starting to expand. So if I change that to 10, you start to see the sun and the the shadows start to get softer so you don't get this very sharp uh reflection from the windows and um a lot of sharp shadows coming in so it, it softens our shadows which looks more uh natural and looks more realistic all right so right now we're going to change we're, we're going to keep the reflection the same and we'll change our location well no we're going to keep the same location but far as our month goes we're in april so let's change that to uh the month that we are in now which is june all right so we're not going to play with the sky turbidity or atmospheric uh density we'll keep we'll keep that the same but let's change our ambient so right now it's at zero point Five zero. Let's change it to one. Okay. So now I'm just kind of looking through my other options here and settings just to try to see what else we can do to make this image look better. So as you can see, we still don't have a very pleasing uh, image yet, but that's okay because we're going to make some more adjustments. So let's look at our camera settings here. So right now we have our auto exposure checked, which is what, um, which I, you know, we'll, we can make some, our own, own changes here. So even though we have it check mark, I'm going to actually make some adjustments here. So our exposure is at 0 0.50. Let's change it to 0 0.25 and our white balance I want to change that to 5,222. So as you can see that change our scene to a more cooler, cooler look rather than a warm. So, which is, which is what I wanted. So let's look into our tent. We're going to change our tent down. Let's say 0 0.50. Let's change it to 0.7 so now we're starting to get some interesting um, uh, interesting look to our scene you're starting to see some of the color it looks a lot different and I guess my true intention is to try to figure out how to get the most out of my renderings by creating character um, creating some very interesting scenes and try to get as close to realism as possible. So I'm going to continue to make some adjustments. Guys, don't forget to smash that like button for me. Hit the notification bell as well. All right, so if we look into our local exposure, we have that enabled as well. So right now our highlights is at 0 0.50. I'm gonna keep my highlights around that same same number let's change our shadows though let's increase our shadows let's do 
1.0. All right, so now we have our lens field of views at 90 degrees. We're gonna check use focal length. So right now we're kind of zoomed out from our main subject and one of the things that I want to do to make my main subject is the bike itself and this area here. So we're going to increase our focal length. We're going to zoom in here and we'll do 26. Okay. So now we're going to click on details and we're going to start making some interesting adjustments here. So right now we have our vignetting at 0%. I want to crank my vignetting all the way to 100%. So now you start to see uh, a lot of my area to darken a lot, which, which is exactly what I want. I want to darken this image and pretty much have the sunlight come in and kind of show more emphasis on the uh, bike and the sunlight that's coming in as well. All right, so our sharpness is pretty high. Let's change that to 20%. And we're going to check mark our parallelism. All right, so here for our depth of field, we're gonna, well, so we're going to continue to pick our focus, but my computer is saving. So as, as you probably have seen my other videos, always turn on your save options in your settings to kind of make sure that if any crashes happen, you will be saved uh, up until this point. So you won't completely have to start over. All right, so now we're gonna pick our focus and I want our focus to be the bike here. So our aparture is at 3.0 and our aparture is just pretty much changing that lens to open up or, or decrease. So it just all depends on how much light you want in your lens. And we're just gonna keep it at 3.0. And our bokeh shape is really to help give a blur effect to separate our, our background from our main subject, which I'm not going to play around with that a whole lot. Let's just make that um, 10. Okay, so everything else we can make some more adjustments to. Let's turn on our composition overlays again and just kind of make sure that I want to make sure that we have our windows kind of lined up centered to our composition grid layout. Okay, we can turn it off now. All right, so now we're gonna go to render and we're going to increase our rendering now, our samples per pixel and our path tracer so we can have a higher quality image. And let's do 2048. And Let's look into increasing the max bounces of light. All right, so I believe I did, let's do about 15. So we're gonna leave emission materials checked and our denoiser checked to remove image noise. And our fireflies is at 14. I believe we're gonna decrease that to five. All right, so now let's go to FX and here we have our contrast set at 50%. We're going to increase that to 55% and our saturation is pretty high, which is okay. It just all depends on, like I said, you know, what type of effect or vibe you're trying to give your rendering or you know just kind of focusing on the contrast and saturation on a good balance to help give you that realism that you're looking for so i'm gonna do 38 and we're, we're gonna put a color gradient on this as well so right now we have different options here and i believe i had a, i had a lot of fun 
trying to play around with the different types of gradients that we can apply to this scene. And it was one of those times where it's a lot of different interesting looks I can go for. And this is kind of where I take an effect of what type of character, what type of dramatic effect I want to give my scene. And with this one, I chose Sandy. So let's see if we can find Sandy. We're just going to scroll down here. So a lot of, a lot of good options, but for this one, I thought Sandy gave the effect, the dramatic effect, the character that I was looking for in my scene. All right. So we didn't add a filter for this one. So we can go to image and right now we are at 2k and I believe I made this 8k image. Guys, don't forget to smash that like button for me and hit the notification bell. All right. So as you can see, we have our nice lighting coming in from our windows and we don't have very sharp, sharp shadows coming in. We have this soft uh, look that gives it more of a realistic uh, feel and it looks pretty good in my opinion. So we're going to select tile rendering. And as you know, tile rendering is when you want to export to higher resolution images. So I just clicked on that just because it's at 8K and when I export it out, you know, you want to have tile rendering selected. Okay. So guys, I believe that this is it. And um, I hope that you learned something and uh, we'll be back with another one.